Hey, hello. I have a question. Go on. Why does everyone look down on me and blame me for lung cancer, but you get away with causing breast cancer, throat cancer, liver disease, alcohol poisoning, fetal alcohol syndrome, drunk driving deaths, interpersonal violence? Pardon me, but I'm not dirty and smelly like you are. I make social gatherings easier and help people to bury their pain in a socially acceptable way. Yeah, but in some ways you're actually deadlier than I am. Okay, let me just say right out the gate that this video is probably gonna be a bit of a downer, but this is a research channel, so I'm gonna talk about the research and you do with it whatever you wanna do with it. But today we are talking about alcohol. It's pretty much common knowledge that drinking tons of alcohol is bad for your liver. Nevertheless, alcohol is generally considered to be a safe drink in lesser doses. Drinking at parties, drinking a cup of wine after a long day of work, or doing shots on your birthday are all normal adult activities. And pretty much everyone drinks, right? Alcohol advertisers who are projected to spend $7.7 .7 billion next year on alcohol ads would like to have you think so. These alluring ads sell us a lifestyle that is fun and cool, but is the wool being pulled over our eyes? And what did we come up with this idea of a safe dose anyway? Is there really a safe amount of alcohol that you can drink without causing any negative side effects to your health? From my tone, you can kind of see where I'm already going with those questions. Stay tuned to find out more about what misleading messages we're being told about alcohol in the media, what the data actually have to say about light to moderate drinking, and what you may want to change in your own life moving forward. Alcohol gets a lot of promotion as a cool beverage. Music videos for many pop songs take place in a club, coming of age movies often show young people chugging alcohol, and it's not hard to find movies aimed at young people where people are only able to confess their love for one another after a few drinks. According to Dr. James Sargent, a professor at Dartmouth School of Medicine who has been studying alcohol use in films for over two decades, more than 80% of movies contain depictions of alcohol use. Dr. Sargent and his team published research showing that alcohol brand placements in movies has almost doubled over the past couple of decades, especially in movies rated for children. On social media, it's not hard to find posts of people drinking until they basically can no longer function, like this one. You can't always be the prettiest girl at the party, but you can always be the drunkest. Or this one. Or this one. One more. In all of these clips, the women are barely able to stand and in the worst of cases, they actually need to be carried home after a night of drinking. Videos like these get tons of laughs and likes, but I sometimes wonder, well, why? To get so drunk to the point where you can't really remember where you are or all the fun that you had with your friends doesn't seem to be inherently desirable, yet it's a common symbol of youth and excitement. Movies, commercials, and social media all send this message that drinking is a normal part of adult life and that if you're not drinking, you're basically missing out on one of the key benefits of being over 21 in this country. According to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, or the NIAAA, about 80% of adults in this country have consumed alcohol at some point in their lives. One quarter of adults report binge drinking, which is defined as four or more drinks for women and five or more drinks for men in the span of two hours, and 14.5 million people ages 12 years and above have experienced alcohol use disorder. Many adults who have problems with alcohol are also parents. An estimated 10.5% of children live with a parent who has alcohol use disorder. Now, let's be honest about what alcohol is. Alcohol is a toxin, hence the use of the word intoxicated when we're talking about imbibing. While I recognize that this is not a representative sample, I always like to look on Reddit to get an idea of what people are discussing about topics that I want to discuss on this channel. And I found lots of posts criticizing the normalization of alcohol in modern society. 
This user calls alcohol one of the most toxic, normalized practices in modern life. This other user lamented how common it is that drinking is basically a given for most social occasions. There was no shortage of posts from people questioning the normalization of ingesting what is essentially a poisonous liquid as a way to be social, seem manly, mostly in the case of beer, de-stress, or any other excuse that you can come up with. The New York Times has covered this topic too, reporting that rates of alcohol abuse and alcohol-related deaths are on the rise, especially among women. To quote Dr. Yusuf Ransom, Associate Professor of Public Health at Yale, alcohol kills many more people than many may realize. It is a major contributor to deaths linked to physical injuries, interpersonal violence, motor vehicle crashes, self-harm, and other harmful outcomes. The Washington Post sent out a similar smoke signal years before. Women in this country have been filling up their glasses with more and more alcohol in recent decades, and this has led to an increase in alcohol-related deaths among females. During the pandemic, national sales of alcohol increased 54% for the week ending March 21st, 2020, and online sales were 262% higher than the year before. While the rise in the prevalence of alcohol use among women is a complex and multifactorial issue, many suspect that this has to do, at least in part, with the wine mom culture. If you're not familiar, this definition from Urban Dictionary will bring you right up to speed. The wine mom trend has grown in popularity as evidenced by the amount of merch out there sporting this seemingly innocuous phrase with lines like, I've waited nine months for this, mama needs some wine, and oh look, it's wine o'clock. TikTok is full of examples of this too. Take a look at this video. Pouring myself a glass of wine. Don't worry, I'm only having one. I know how to enjoy one glass of wine. Or this one. Both of these videos seem to imply that these women's husbands are responsible for keeping them from drinking too much. I get that it's meant to be funny and lighthearted, but the message being sent out here is that when their husbands aren't around, they're basically at risk for getting blackout drunk because there's no one to stop them. Take a look at this next clip. You know, just being a mom, doing mom things, Cheers! And this one. These clips are meant to be relatable to other moms and highlight the fact that being a mother, just being a parent is very stressful. Still, the message being put out here is that when chores and kids stress you out, wine is the answer and you can never have enough. When you really stop to consider the subtext here, it's almost like this trend is promoting that moms need to drink alcohol in order to function as good parents, which is questionable. This seems to me like a perfect example of how marketing can push people to identify with a particular product that they would otherwise distance themselves from. Beer is seen as a masculine drink and wine is seen as a feminine drink, yet wine has way more alcohol than beer does. A 12 fluid ounce can of beer is normally around 5% alcohol, while a 5 fluid ounce glass of wine has 12% alcohol. Wine is a more potent alcoholic beverage, but perhaps because it comes in a curvy glass that is normally associated with fine dining and elegance, we forget that. Now, I'm not here to preach or tell you how to live your life. The message of this video really is that despite how innocuous alcohol drinking may seem, there is research evidence showing that even light drinking can be harmful for your health. Let's start by looking at the data for head and neck cancers. 
There are multiple publications that I pulled from for this video and they will be linked below as usual, but I will use this paper as an example. As you can see, even a drink or less a day significantly increases the risk of mouth and throat cancers. This last sentence tells us that even small amounts of alcohol are harmful, so it doesn't take 10 shots to cause damage. Just one will do. But what about wine? You might be asking yourself, isn't wine still good for you or at least better than beer and liquor since it has antioxidants? Given how much publicity the Mediterranean diet gets, it makes sense that you would ask yourself that question. But I have bad news. Wine does have antioxidants, but those antioxidants are not magical. In this paper, the authors state that phytochemicals, antioxidants, seem not to affect oral cancer risk, being probably present below the effective dosages and or due to their low bioavailability, which is an estimate of how well they get absorbed. Wine contains antioxidants like resveratrol, which have anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant properties, but you would need to drink 100 glasses of wine a day to reach the effective dose of resveratrol. Of course, I do not recommend this. It is true that some studies on the Mediterranean diet, which may include wine, show a reduced risk for oropharyngeal cancers, but we have to be careful about making recommendations for the global population based on this alone. Alcohol, or to be more specific to the type of alcohol that humans consume, ethanol, is known to cause cancer in humans and increase cancer risk, especially in places where there is direct contact, hence the high risk of mouth and throat cancer. This is because it causes damage to the DNA of the cells there and produces reactive oxygen species, or ROS, substances that deplete antioxidants and damage DNA and proteins. Furthermore, ethanol can activate other cancer-causing chemicals, including the ones found in cigarettes and environmental pollutants. Going back for a moment to the point I made earlier about being cautious about making general recommendations based on research that was mainly done in one part of the world, some people are more susceptible to the effects of alcohol because of their genetics. East Asians typically have a genetic variation which makes it harder for them to break down alcohol, making it more toxic for them, even at low doses. Also, despite the fact that we often joke about Eastern Europeans being able to tolerate alcohol better than people of other ethnicities, that isn't entirely true. Their higher intake of spirits is linked to higher rates and a greater number of deaths for oral cancer. All in all, light drinking in this systematic review was found to be associated with a higher risk of oral, oropharyngeal, or upper aerodigestive tract cancers when compared to abstention from alcohol. Now let's talk about breast cancer. Alcohol is associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. This review of the evidence indicates that intake, even intake of less than 10 to 15 grams per day, is associated with increased risk of this disease. For reference, just one drink has about 14 grams of alcohol. As was the case with head and neck cancers, the research does not show that there's any safe dose of alcohol when it comes to trying to avoid breast cancer. For every 10 grams of alcohol consumed, there is an estimated 4 to 9% increase in risk. This is true for all types of alcoholic drinks, including wine, and binge drinking may be especially harmful. Possible explanations include increased breast density with greater alcohol intake, altered estrogen metabolism, and the carcinogenicity of the alcohol itself. And I have even more bad news here. Some research shows that the risk per drink may be even higher for younger women. In this paper, it was reported that for women who have never been pregnant, every drink increases risk of breast cancer by 11%. This meta-analysis supports the findings of the previous studies, as does this report. This report by the World Cancer Research Fund from 2018 supports these conclusions too and has way more data if you're interested in reading more on this topic. The overarching conclusions from this report are that there is strong evidence that alcohol in general increases cancer at several sites, including the mouth, the liver, the colon, and the stomach. A peculiar finding here is that two drinks a day may protect against kidney cancer. It seems like alcohol basically helps to clean out the kidney's filtration system. It obviously isn't worth it to protect your kidneys and then destroy multiple other organs in the process.
I made this video primarily to talk about the harms of light to moderate drinking, but I also want to take this opportunity to talk about the harms of heavy drinking, aka alcohol abuse, considering that it is such a major cause of disease and death worldwide. Alcohol abuse is associated with increased risk of drowning, injuries from violence, falls and motor vehicle crashes, increased risk of female breast cancer, oropharyngeal cancer, esophageal cancer, things we already talked about, as well as harmful medication interactions, and risk for fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, or FASD, in the offspring of women who consume alcohol during pregnancy. One in three liver transplants in the US are done to save people from alcohol-related liver disease, and 50% of people who die from cirrhosis abused alcohol. To summarize, there really is no safe dose of alcohol. Every time you take a drink, you are causing some damage to your body. Also keep in mind that what you see on TV or social media is just a slice of real life. Alcohol ads tend to show people who are young and carefree drinking away, but what they don't show are the cancer patients, drunk driving victims, and people waiting in line for a liver transplant. At the end of the day, there are tons of things that can increase your risk of dying from cancer or just dying in general, your profession, your hobbies, where you happen to live, and so forth. How you weigh those risks is entirely up to you. Lastly, if you're struggling with alcohol addiction or someone that you care about is struggling with that issue, I've left some links in the description box that may be of use to you. Take care.